Welcome to Episode 5 of Poems of Our Climate, a poetry podcast with myself, Christopher Smith. All poems in this episode are taken from the City Lights Pocket Poets Anthology, edited by Lawrence Ferlinghetti, and published in 1995. The first poem in this episode is The Origin of Baseball by Kenneth Patchen. Someone had been walking in and out of the world without coming to much decision about anything. The sun seemed too hot most of the time. There weren't enough birds around, and the hills had a silly look when he got on top of one. The girls in heaven, however, thought nothing of asking to see his watch like you would want someone to tell a joke. Time? They'd say, what's that mean, time? Laughing with the edges of their white mouths like a flutter of paper in a madhouse. And he'd stumble over, can't you keep your big wings out of the aisle? But down again, there'd be millions of people without enough to eat and men with guns just standing there shooting each other. So he wanted to throw something, and he picked up a baseball. The next poem in this episode is April Fool Birthday Poem for Grandpa by Diane de Prima. Today is your birthday, and I have tried writing these things before. But now, in the gathering madness, I want to thank you for telling me what to expect for pulling no punches back there in the scrubbed Bronx parlor. Thank you for honestly weeping in time to innumerable heartbreaking Italian operas, for pulling my hair when I pulled the leaves off the trees so I'd know how it feels. We are involved in it now. Revolution. Up to our knees and the tide is rising. I embrace strangers on the street. Filled with their love and mine, the love you told us had to come or we die. Told them all in that Bronx park. Me listening in spring Bronx dusk, breathing stars. So glorious to me your white hair, your height, your fierce blue eyes, rare among Italians. I stood a ways off looking up at you. My grandpa people listened to. I stand a ways off listening as I pour soup. Young men with light in their faces at my table, talking love, talking revolution, which is love spelled backwards. How you would love us all. Would thunder your anarchist wisdom at us. Would thunder Dante and Giordano Bruno. Orderly men bent to your ends. Well, I want you to know we do it for you and your ilk for Carlo Tresca, for Sacco and Vanzetti, without knowing it or thinking about it, as we do it for Aubrey Beardsley, Oscar Wilde, all streetlights shall be purple, do it for Trotsky and Shelley and big dumb Kropotkin, Eisenstein strike people, Jean Cocteau's Anui, we do it for the stars over the Bronx, that they may look on earth and not be ashamed.
The next poem in this episode is an excerpt from Part 1 of Factory by Antler. The machines waited for me. Waited for me to be born and grow young. For the totem poles of my personality to be carved and the slow pyramid of days to rise around me, to be robbed and forgotten. They waited where I would come to be, a point on earth. The green machines of the factory, the noise of the miraculous machines of the factory, waited for me to laugh so many times, to fall asleep and rise awake so many times to see as a child all the people I did not want to be, and for suicide to long for me as the years ran into the mirror, disguising itself as I grew old in eyes that grew old, as multitudes worked on machines I would work on, worked, ceased to exist, and died. For me, they waited patiently, the machines, all the time in the world. As requiems waited for my ears, they waited. As naked magazines waited for my eyes, they waited. As I waited for soft machines like mine, time zones away from me, unknown to me, face, flesh, all the ways of saying goodbye, while all my possibilities, like hand over hand on a bat to see who bats first, end up choking the air. While all my lives leap into lifeboats, shrieking, You can't afford to kill time while time is killing you. Before I said, only the religion whose command before all others is thou shalt not work, I shall hosanna. Before, I said, not only underground are the minds of men eaten by maggots. Before, I said, I would rather be dead than sweat at the work of zombies. The machines waited. The final poem in this episode was written by Yevgeny Yevtushenko and was translated by Anselm Hollow. From a Talk They tell me, man, you are brave. And I'm not. Bravery never was my vice. I just didn't feel low enough to be quite as cowardly as some I saw around. But I never tried to push the world out of orbit. I just wrote, so what? I never informed, though. And I laughed at what was too much, poked fun at the bogus, tried to say what I thought, loud enough to be heard. But a time will come to remember and burn with shame when we shall have done with dishonesty and plain lies, with those strange times when a man who was simply honest was called brave. Mm -hmm.